Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 44 of the Self Publishing Roundtable, the podcast by indie authors for indie authors. Uh, I am your host, Wade Finnegan, and my co hosts for this evening are John Ward, uh, Carl Sinclair will be fashionably late, I guess, and David W. Wright. Uh, Trish could not make it tonight because she had a power outage right before we went on. Um, our special guests tonight, well, at least one guest anyway, are uh, po po post apocalyptic writers John O'Brien and Sean Chester. And, and, and the dog. And, and John's dog. Um, but uh, uh, Sean's uh, having Google fun, so we will, we'll see if we can get him in, in a little bit later. Um, either, either way, he can troll the comments. He can probably do like Carl does or something. But um, John and Sean have had some terrific success selling their uh, self-published works, uh, and a great deal of that success they attribute to the cross-promotion that they've been doing with other authors in the same genre, You know, working together to promote each other's work, which sounds like a really cool idea. So we brought them on to discuss this strategy and how they first began to implement it. Um, and they have tried many other ways of promotion, too, so we wanted to pick their brains and what has worked the best for them. So I have Google Chrome on my I'm passing already installed, to our viewers. but it recognizes another. And we got, we got to tell Sean to quit talking. <laughs> but thank you, <laughs> John, for uh, coming on and Sean attempting to. This is off to a rousing start, as always. But thank you for coming on, John. <laughs> hey, it's absolutely my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Can you give us uh, just a little brief introduction uh, about your writing journey and stuff? And maybe you can say some bad things about Sean since he's not here to defend himself, too. So. <laughs> right, and hopefully you won't listen to it later. <laughs> uh, writing journey, I don't know. It's, uh, I only started writing a, a few years ago, I guess almost three years ago last month. Um, it was one of those things, laying in bed, uh, reading through a book, and realized I had a story to tell, and uh, started writing on it the very next morning. There's, um, I mean, as far as a journey, it has been a journey. It's far exceeded anything I ever thought. Uh, you know, I thought the wonderful three sales a month I was getting was pretty much what I was going to be looking at. Um, so it, it has been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, a lot of work, a lot of promotion. Um, but I really just enjoy writing on the story. Cool. So, okay, so you said three sales a month. When did it start ticking up, and what started that ball rolling? Uh, you know, it was probably a... Uh, I would say about six months after I published, um, and it was at about the same time that I actually changed covers, went with a uh, professional artist and uh, changed the cover. Um, I don't know if the two are associated, but it it certainly seems to uh, pick it up. Very cool. Yeah, a good cover will definitely increase sales. Yeah, considering the first cover I had, I mean, I made it, and uh, uh, I could spell Photoshop two out of three times at that point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, why don't you tell us um, about the type of cross-promotion you guys do, and how many authors are you working with? in these cross promotions. Oh, right now. now you're going to put me on the spot because I'm going to have to name each and every one of them. Um, hang on a second, I can uh, tell you. Basically, we just got together. You know, we're a group of people who believe that uh, we're not in competition with each other. Um, you know, whoever, it's not that somebody's going to buy one book and never buy another book. You know, if, uh, if somebody reads Sean's books or Mark's books, uh, they're eventually going to get around to mine and vice versa. Um, so it's it's a way of expanding the reader base. You know, if we promote each other's works, um, you know, one, you're doing the reader a favor by uh, cluing them in on some very good series uh, that they might not otherwise know about. And, uh, you know, when people, uh, the other authors cross-promote me, uh, does the same thing, you know. It all... Uh, and it's not really all about the sales. It's about the writing. I mean, we got we have to eat. You know, Top Ramen gets old. But um, let me... I have to look on our little group here because I'm horrible with this. Do, do, do. Do, do you have, um, like, a regular group that you uh, do this with? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we have uh, James Cook, uh, Mark Tufo. Uh, Heat Stall Cup, Armand uh, Rosamilia, 
and uh, Sean Chester and Joe McKinney. So that's a group of seven. Uh, how, however, you're gonna ask me to count now. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, we're that's, we're a pretty high demanding show. That's really. all right. Put put me on the spot. That's awesome. <laughs> I should have asked for the questions beforehand. <laughs> we haven't even made them all up yet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, seven. <clears throat> Okay, so then how did this group start out for you guys? How did you guys find each other to start doing this? Was it just, did someone mastermind it, or was it just coincidence? How'd that go? Well, uh, I guess way back when Mark and I uh, got together and thought that you know, I, I had been looking through his reviews and noted that uh, the people reviewing his book um, or his series had I didn't have one that had reviewed mine. So the potential was out there for a larger reader base, and you know we got together, became friends, uh, started chatting, and uh, figured out ways that we could uh, promote each other to expand the reader base. How long ago was this? No, uh, this was about a year and a half ago, and uh, since then, then I started the we started the group. Um, you know, talk to James and, and Sean and Heath and, and everybody else uh, about coming in. And so, you know, whenever we have a new release, we just promote it on our websites and uh, Facebook pages. Hmm, very cool. Now, do, do all of the, the different authors um, have, like, a, a presence out there on Facebook and stuff? So you're, like, pulling yes. these together? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, every, everyone has either an author page or uh, I, I choose to use a personal profile. Um, I just think I reach a lot more people that way with the way Facebook works. And um, how much has this expanded um, all of your audiences? I mean, how much has it helped? You know, that's really hard to say. Um, I know whenever I post, like, say, Sean... Uh, and Mark both put out a, a new book recently. It, there's usually about 50 to 80 comments saying thanks, didn't know that was out type thing. So although we may have a lot of the same, uh, I guess, friends or uh, reader bases now, uh, if they only promote on their site, they may not reach them all. Mm -hmm. Just the way Facebook works, you know. And do you all use uh, mailing lists? No. No, just uh, you put out posts. Uh, no, none of you use mailing lists? Well, I can't speak for the others, nope. but I know I don't. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I'll put a blog out on my website, and I'll put a post up on um, Facebook page. And then the blog also copies out to Twitter. I don't use Twitter a whole lot, but that's, that's another avenue. Um, right. oh. Outside of Facebook, do you guys like have any other uh, in, in the blogs? Do you have any other places where you like gather and have like a fan base? Um, I don't. You know, I, I I do several interviews and so forth on various blog pages. Uh, Mark Tufo is really the one who gets out there and advertises uh, a lot on the other uh, sites. Um, I'm not even sure how many he goes out to. Uh, but I know he's a, he's a lot more prolific with that than I am. You know, doing it, it's a full-time job, you know. When I'm really in-depth with it, with the writing and so forth, it's a 16-hour day. So I really don't have the time to go out there and advertise, uh, you know, like through Fangora or whatever. Now, okay. is this, it, are you a writer full-time? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, I, oh, I'm sorry, Dave. Go, go ahead. Is everybody in the group full-time writers now? <sighs> I don't think so. Um, I know Mark is. Uh, I'm not sure about Sean or James or Armand or Heath or, you know, Joe. Um, I'm just not sure what they do on the side. Okay. Uh, we have a question from the, in the comments. Uh, Archer Caldwell asks, is the plan to continue cross-promoting within the genre, or would you guys consider other types of authors to branch out to different, different types? Well, I think for the cross-promotion to work, it would have to be in the same genre. Um, that doesn't mean that we're not going to write in a different genre. 
It's just, you know, the, the reader base tends to stick within a particular area. Um, now, post-apocalyptic covers a very wide area. You know, it's, it's zombies, uh, viruses, you know, nuclear war, whatever have you. Uh, you know, it's basically the fall of civilization and whatever comes after. So anything that covers those areas, um, sure. But we have a we have a pretty tight little group. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if that answered that or not. It probably didn't. I'm probably being very political. <laughs> I hear you. I hear oh, you. Oh look! Look, Sean is on. Oh my gosh, Sean. <laughs> hey. All right. We can't talk about Sean anymore. Yeah. Stop, John. Stop talking about him. Anyway. Okay. My nose <laughs> All right. Mister uh, Ford, you had another question. I think. So I was going to ask um, okay. if you guys had um, is are you still looking to add new authors to your group or have you capped the membership or any thoughts on that? I don't really know. I think we're pretty comfortable where we're at. Um, that doesn't say we won't expand out. Uh, there, are, you know, uh, some other authors out there that may. I, I, I'm probably going to get this way wrong, but. Um, Oh, hang on. Like Eric Shellman uh, is up and coming, and um, as are some others. So eh, nothing's to say we're capped, but we're pretty comfy with where we're at right now. Uh, do you all I don't know. Any thoughts, Sean? Um, you know, it's it's kind of Tracy Tufo started the ball rolling, so she's the brains in the operation, if you ask me. I don't know. I'm not speaking for John, but uh, she kind of oh great. She kind of <laughs> put us together, so. She did a good job, I think. Very good job. Do you all read each other's stuff, and have you started like writing together, collaborating with each other on stories as well? I, uh, for myself, I don't read in the genre. Um, just for the specific thing that I don't want to subconsciously take somebody else's idea. Um, you know, it, it, you may not mean to, but it, it's bound to flow into the story. So I, I read uh, mostly in the uh, fantasy and some sci-fi. Yeah, I want to, I want to ditto that. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I read Tufo's first book, and while I was writing, I think my first or second, and uh, I went went numb when I read that he referenced a Rorschach splash on the wall. You know, I, I did that, and I think my first book, and I'm like. I hope he doesn't think I, I ripped off one of his lines, but you know I've I've seen that in many thrillers and whatnot since. So. But yeah, I'm the same way. I don't I don't read in the genre. Um, I'm reading Earth Abides right now, but that was 1949, so I don't think there's gonna be a problem there, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, same thing. Are Are you writing together anything or no? Negative. Well, Mark and I have a very long-standing collaborative effort, kind of going. We're halfway through a novel, but it's been about a year to a year and a half in the making. We both, uh, we heat each other off sync. Um, you know, I'll be ready to publish and dive into the novel, but he'll be right in the middle of writing another one. So it's there. I don't know when it'll be out, uh, but it eventually will be. That's definitely one I'm going to have to read when you guys get that done. I've heard about it for a long time. Uh, I know, right? For years. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of, kind of an ongoing thing. And, you know, finding time to for me with family and all that to write and uh, you know finish the next book that they're clamoring for is a uh, is a pretty daunting task. I've been asked to do some stories and this and that, but uh, I gotta gotta focus on the one. I usually put out a novel every four or five six months, and uh, that's pretty daunting. We we were asking actually earlier. Are you full time then, Sean? Yeah, I've been full time. I. I I turned in my uh, my old job about three years ago, so I've been doing this full time since. Excellent, excellent. That's cool. Um, so now you guys you guys put out like a, a box set, right? That was like a, a collection. Uh, Archer Caldwell from the comments may know so I saw it on Amazon. Um, did you guys see your individual success uh, kick up from that? Uh, what kind what kind of response did you guys get with that box set? Well, I think overall, I mean, it's been favorable, at least from uh, what I can see. I I haven't noticed um, a dramatic jump in sales, but it, it could be. It's really hard to keep track of, uh, you know, who bought the first book in the uh, box set and then went on to uh, buy the second book. There's just no way to track that. Yeah, I don't think there's that much metadata out there to, to, to mine. Uh, I do think that 
for myself uh, being a, associated with uh, these fellas and also uh, you know Mr. McKinney. Uh, it's kind of kind of a boon for me being able to put McKinney's quote on the front of my book. You know, I asked him his permission first, of course, but uh, you know, it's it's uh, and also uh, just having a couple of interviews with some of these guys, Armand and. Uh, that was, that was kind, of, kind of cool to know these guys and getting in the book. I was amazed that they asked me. I think I was one of the last ones to be invited, so very grateful for that. Now, John, you said you uh, you prefer reading other genres. If, if you consider also writing in those as well, or have you? Um, I've considered it. I have a prologue for a, a fantasy novel completed that I did um, a couple of years ago. Uh, whether I'll get back to it or not, I don't know. When this uh, current series is done, I have some ideas for you know a second and third series. So I'm not real sure. Um, you know, I I have another idea for uh, a military style thriller as well. Uh, kind of you know I'm not going to associate myself with Tom Clancy, but uh, along the lines of the style that Tom Clancy writes. So I'm not sure which direction I'll go when this series finally in, uh, finishes. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to write something in the, the Clancy, you know, he's kind of a, one of my, I, I read him in high school. Uh, Terry Brooks also in the fantasy vein. Mm. He's a Northwest author. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Uh, so, you know, I kind of would like to go either way. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones. I could never write like Martin, though. He's oh, <laughs> my <laughs> word. Yeah. Boy, I wish, right? I'm yeah. sure we'd all love to do that. <laughs> yeah, when I'm not read, writing and I read uh, Lee Child religiously, uh, Vince Flynn, rest in peace. Uh, you know, he <clears> passed away. Brad Thor, big fan of those kind of books as well. Cool. So do you guys have like a um, structure to the type of promotion you do? Um, you know, you you make your blog post, you do your Facebook thing. Does anybody follow up to make sure that all the members have done that or um, any type of accountability? Get in line or get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I think it's kind of an honor system. I think... Uh, for myself, you know, I, I never check up on anybody, and I pretty much anytime I find something posted from John or, or any other, anyone in the books, I'll I'll uh, forward that and share it. And people often ask uh, who who I recommend, and definitely all these guys, I, I pass them forward, and they've done it for me too. I personally send my thugs out if I find out that nobody's posted. So <laughs> yeah, I, it was 3 a.m. bangs on the door a couple times. That was that was you. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah, oh, okay. I, I noticed you posted, so I raided them and uh, told them to leave you alone. And okay. Thank no, you. actually, it, it's not very structured at all. Like uh, like Sean says, it's just you know, um, we have a uh, we have a group page, and you post on there what you would like people to share out, and they share it out. I mean, that's just uh, there's no need to check up. You know, everybody is 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 honest and fair, and we're all in this together. So. Yeah, it's, it's a big big tent. There's lots of, I think, I don't know if John said this once or it was marked to me. Uh, there's a lot of readers out there, and they pretty much read anything zombie, and they're voracious readers, and uh, you know, there's, there's a lot to go around for sure. Have you um, thought about all of you going in together for, like, a book bub ad or anything like that? For a what? A book bub ad or any of the paid advertising that is available? Oh. Uh, it hasn't been discussed. Like I said, um, you know, Mark does a lot more of that uh, via uh, Tracy. Um, I I don't do any paid advertising, at least not that I'm aware of. Uh, <laughs> Illegitimate paid advertising, but that's okay. <laughs> right, right, yeah. I just wonder why that bank account just gets drained every month. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Been... There's just no time for it. Correct. Yeah, I'm always writing. I don't have time to. I don't even check reviews. I haven't done that for two and a half years. Easy. Uh, I don't. I don't check my sales. I don't. Wait, do wait, 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 wait. You don't read. You haven't read reviews in two and a half years. I have not read a review in two and a half years. I, the ones that that are done, you know. But there's a couple of examiner articles that I've read uh, by different people. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't go and read reviews. It's just not not productive for me. Well, how how do you know if? Uh... How do you know if your audience is as receptive if, if you're not, like, re getting their feedback? Well, you know, I, I got this this from Jay Conrath. I read his I read his blog, and, you know, he says that if it spins you out, you know, a few of them did early on, and uh, I re responded to one one of them, and that's not a good thing to do. And uh, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you got turned and, off yeah, to him? 
as a novice author, I learned that the hard way, and, um, and you know what? Uh, it's just it, it's worked out so far. So I, I re keep real good contact with the people that, that get on, you know, talk to me through Facebook and Twitter and whatnot. Uh, but the negative stuff, I don't need to read it. I still read every review. I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh, I, I've been told so many times, just leave it because it's just going to give you a heartache, you know. But, uh, you know, there's more positive than negative out there. And, and even with the negative, as long as they're not, you know, the stalker or, you know, um, out there to purposely harm, I, I can gather some from what they're saying. Yeah. I, I do have to say that I'm surprised that uh, you guys don't have mailing lists. Uh, is it something that you looked into and decided not to do or what? <sighs> I've looked at it for the website. I just uh, I know how much I hate just receiving all the mail <laughs> that I get, so I don't want to be a part of that in somebody else's life. But see, now I, I used to be of a similar mindset, but at the same time, you know, you you have to be able to reach your audience, and you got to figure that people that like you and like your book, they want to hear from you. As long as you're not spamming the hell out of them, uh, I, I think it's something you should reconsider because. Uh, you need you need a direct line to your audience. I feel at all times because if something happens with Amazon, they decide, well, let's just get rid of their books because they're offended by something. You, you need a way to reach out to your audience, and you can't count on them coming to Facebook all the time. Uh, you you definitely want direct access to your readers, and that also helps, like uh, you know, with reviews and stuff like that, or letting them know. Especially if all of you are like pooling this together, you can like let them know about other stuff or box sets that you have going on. Uh, you know, I won't I won't beat it over the head, but I I, I think you should reconsider because it is it is one of as indie writers, it's one of our most powerful tools. Well, I agree in a capacity of that um, Amazon does a really good job of that for you. You know, one on your author page, they have the button where people can click on and say. Let me know when this author comes out, and that they're it at work. and they're advertising um, with regards to sending emails out for people that have bought or, or purchased the the first sets of your series. When you publish another one, right? That that's in the email within a week to the people that have already purchased that. Okay, now now I I have released. I don't even know how many books in the past few years. I have not gotten one email. And I've signed up on two different email accounts when my own books were released. I've signed up to other people's. I've gotten one out of maybe ten people I've signed up for. That Amazon subscribe thing does not work. Oh, uh, they don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> they should. I make them a lot of money. But <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm kidding. Um, I get my books in the email... Well, it's not as often as it used to be, but probably once every week, uh, you know, at the outset, once every two weeks. Yeah, um, I, I've seen mine mentioned every three or four months, I think. I, I get one across, you know, sci-fi sci stuff you'd like or whatnot. And it's funny to get one that, that's telling me to buy my own books. Right. <laughs> I like that, though. I have friends no. that forward those also, you know, they'll, they'll forward, hey, look, you know, I've been solicited to buy your book, you know. Cold call or whatever, but I, I, I'm the same mindset of John. You know, I don't I don't like to carpet bomb. You know, all the, the the different zombie sites I'm I'm affiliated with or joined or whatnot. You know, I I'm very low on the self promotion. But I think going back to what you're talking about earlier with the Facebook and and the, the lists of uh, email addresses or whatnot, I, I keep I'm very accessible. I talk to to my readers, my Facebook buds, I call them. Whenever the thing chimes, a messenger, I'll try to re respond back to him immediately, and, and I think that's that's helped me quite a bit. Yeah. Okay. Are you are you guys on other platforms like Kobo and such, or are you just strictly Amazon? No, it's uh, I'm out there on most every site. Um, I release through uh, you know I have my own Amazon account, so I hold that, and I release through Smashwords for everything else. So it's Barnes and Noble, Sony, iTunes, Kobo. Um, and you know they have an expanded list uh, that they keep adding to. I think Sony and Kobo joined recently. Um, yeah, Oyster. There's a, I'm the same way. I'm Smashwords and Amazon. Uh, I'm not going to put my eggs into one basket. I learned that from J Conrad. Also reading his blog. Uh, you know, many eyeballs you can get on your books helps. Sales aren't 
huge, uh, you know, compared to Amazon on the other channels. But uh, you know, the every three months it's a nice little chunk, especially when your quarterly tax payments come up. Yeah. Yeah, Sean, you were the last one to join the group. Is that right? Uh, it last or close to last, I guess. Maybe James Cook was right there with me. Uh, they extended to me. It's kind of nice. And how long had you been writing or publishing before you joined the group? Um, a couple of years. All right. Have you noticed a big difference in your sales and stuff since you joined? You know, I, I couldn't. I don't know if I can attribute it to that. To be honest, uh, I, I doubled my income from last year over to this year, so uh, a lot, a lot of growth there. My accountant uh, was amazed. Okay. See, one one thing I have uh, noticed a lot, it, Sean and I, you know, cross promote quite a bit. I'm not sure how that works, um, but a lot of the friend requests I get, you know, there's one additional friend, and and lo and behold, it's always Sean. Um, so I think whatever we're doing expands our reader base as far as the ability to communicate directly with them. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's you know par par partially it's also because you know the, the military nature of our our novels. True. Um, a lot, lot of, lot of service people that are deployed and, and our former uh, contact me, and you know, I think they really enjoy our books. So, how about some other promotions uh, besides the, the cross promotion of each other? What, what other things do you guys try to do? You, you got Facebook, and you got these cross promotions. Is there anything else that you are working on to, to promote yourselves? Well, I run down the middle of Main Street with a poster board and uh, pinwheels and sparklers flying off. So uh, I bet that I, works perfect. <laughs> uh, it's it's pretty good. Um, of course, I tell everybody I'm Sean Chesser, but that's all right. Uh, I hired a skywriter during the the rainy months here. It just didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I uh, that's pretty much about it. I I really you know. Early on when I started, I read, and I think it was the same person Sean mentions that Conrath uh, had mentioned, choose three, you know, social networks and become very good at them. Um, well, I chose one, and that's Facebook. I just, I really don't have time to uh, to go out to Twitter um, or, you know, uh, Google Plus or, or any of the other social networks. Um, I'm busy enough with Facebook. It... Uh, you know, I have to find time to write. I, I enjoy the messages. I really enjoy the interaction, um, but I just don't have the time to expand out. Now, so I, have an, I have an important question, and this relates to our friend Carl here. Uh, do you, have you considered doing an all-beard group? <laughs> <laughs> As this you can is, say, uh, <laughs> really? You want me to grow a beard? <laughs> <laughs> I, it's I, a movement. I, Carl has started. I think all science fiction fantasy authors need beards. Uh, <laughs> it's mandated. It's, uh, it's a Patrick Rothfuss it, rule. <laughs> it's definitely proven that uh, a large beard will help you with sales. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm going to start writing in romance then. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. I, I had to get Beard into the conversation before Carl did. Otherwise, we'd be talking about cricket next, and nobody wants that. Hey, I've played cricket. <laughs> oh, no. no. Not another cricket. Don't get him started. Finally. <laughs> no, I uh, used to live in Australia, and I played uh, quite a bit of cricket. Oh, yeah, Carl's are... from New Zealand, so you guys are enemies. <laughs> yeah, well, he's in Perth now, though, so he's a crossover or something, right? That's a... Or something like that. <laughs> Uh, John Ward, you had another question? Yes? No? Thought. Um, whenever you guys do the um, posts about promotion, um, is it just, hey, so and so's released a new book, go check it out? Or what type of things do you write whenever you're making these type of posts? It's pretty much just, a, hey, look what Sean or Mark or James just released, go check it out, and you put a link on it. Um, that. That's pretty much about it. And like I said, you know, whenever I put one out on somebody, you know, it gets anywhere from, I don't know, I'm just thinking off the cuff, 120 to 200 likes and maybe, you know, 50 to 80 comments running down it. Um, so people see it. It works. I don't know how that equates to sales, but I imagine everybody that writes, especially seeing most of them uh, state heading there now, uh, I think it does pretty well. 
Do you do any type of posts leading up to that? You know, t like teaser type things or anything like that? Well, I will for my own. Uh, I, I won't post anything out there for cross promotion. I'll uh, I'll do a cover release. Um, uh, that's really about it, you know. And blog release to say, hey, you know, I'm in the editing phase, so we're just a uh, we're just a few weeks out. Then the cover release, and then I uh, then the sun comes out, and I skip town, and then I come back, and uh, edit and then release. So and usually when I'll do a release, I'll put an event uh, rather than just a post. That uh, that way it reaches absolutely everyone. Okay. Um, now, I think it was you, John. This has been a few months, but um, is either yeah, I'm pretty sure it was you. Um, you'd posted, I don't know, maybe like 2,000, 3,000 words. It was a complete little short story about some guys who were ghost hunters going through a building. Was that you or was that Sean? Ghost hunters going through a building? Yeah. That sounds like Mark Tufo. You sure it wasn't like it, a Christmas it might story? Have been, it might have been Tufo. Yeah. Yeah. He used to. He posted, I think, last Christmas or the one before. He would do a, a series of short stories, um, leading up to, I think, Christmas Day. He ended it. Okay. Um, do the members of your group do things like that on a regular basis to help expose the readers or your friends? on Facebook and stuff to their writing? As far as promote what they're putting out? No, or, just to give people like a, you know, hey, here's a little short story I wrote or, you know, some little uh, sort of thing. You know, I used to, um, as part of the, uh, the lead up, um, you know, put about two or 3,000 words from some action scene in the book out there. Um... I haven't done that with the last couple, and and I don't know why. To be perfectly honest, uh, it was a good idea. People enjoyed it. It's it's part of that lead up process. Uh, I just haven't mainly because I'm usually stuck here editing, and you know that that's twelve hours sitting in front of the screen, and I don't want to see any more. When you were doing that, um, did you have a good response to it? Uh, there was a positive response. I don't know how that would ever equate into sales, but people, have, you know, it was usually the oh, can't wait till it comes out, um, uh, that you would get attached to it. You get a little excitement going. I've noticed a few, yeah. few readers say, "No, you tease. I don't want to see this. I don't want to see this." You know, but there's no spoilers, of course. But uh, you get fifty. I think about fifty-fifty. Half of them don't want to, want even see it until it's out. Carl, you got a question? Yeah, um, you guys talked that you didn't do a lot of um, checking about sales and what's working and not other than obviously looking at the amount of comments and likes and stuff the posts are getting on Facebook. Um, I'm assuming that you therefore don't meet as a group to um, discuss what may or may not work as in to down to the sales and then tweak things and talk about different ways to improve. If there's no... Um, if there's no discussion about what's working and what's selling, uh, how, how do you know what the benefits to the group is, and I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, well, obviously you're getting a lot of posts on Facebook, but if you don't know if that's attributing to sales, how do you keep improving the group and keep expanding? And, uh, there, are, uh, there are some discussions, you know, uh, some experimentations um, around releases, like I know uh, Mark tried on his one, spreading out uh, the cross promotion over the period of a couple of weeks uh, to see if that would assist in the rankings. Um, you know, uh, trying to figure out Amazon's algorithm is next to impossible. It uh, so they tried that. Uh, it didn't really seem to make much of a difference, to be perfectly honest. Um, so there are some discussions around that. Mainly, we get together. We may talk about what works, what doesn't, uh, at times. Uh, but mostly, it's about just cross promoting each other. There isn't anything intricate um, involved in that. We're just, you know, a, a group of friends, uh, a group of authors who uh, cross promote each other's work. 
Yeah. Now, if I can um, relate my own observation here, because before I asked you guys to be on the show, um, I was following your pages for a while, you and Sean and uh, Mark Tufo, and following your sales rank. And the thing that really impressed me about it, la, 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 la. <laughs> the thing that impressed me about it wasn't that you guys were like in the top 100 of Amazon, you know, because we have those guys on. But the thing that I was really impressed with was each of you has like your own tier of where you are, and you all seem to be making you know respectable amount of money, but you don't really fluctuate. It's not your three thousand um, on one week, and then you drop back down to eighty thousand. You're at three thousand, and you stay right around three thousand, three thousand, five thousand, seven thousand, back up to three thousand, or maybe up to one thousand for a new release, that sort of thing. But you're very stable, and I don't see that in a lot of self-publishers. Um, you have the guys who make the promotions, and then they jump up in the ranks, and they hang there for a while. And then they go down. Um, but the kind of stability you guys have, it seems rare to me. Um, I think for me, um, I took this from Conrad. It's, it's, you have to, uh, the next next book sells the rest of the earlier ones in the series. So hey, if you're constantly writing and, and putting out as, as good of a book as you can within uh, you know, four, five, six months, quality edited, I think that's helped me. That's helped me quite a bit. Uh, I wouldn't put out something that I don't want. I wouldn't want to read. Well, nothing sells like you know another book. Um, I I think personally, it's because we interact with the readers. Yeah, that too. You know, uh, they enjoy that interaction. They feel part of it. They have some ownership uh, to it. You know, and having that ownership, they tell their friends. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I it uh, I, I think a large part of it, you know, plus I just really enjoy it, but I think a large part of that consistency is because we do um, enjoy that, uh, you know, the back and forth and the messaging and the talking and the chatting and uh, uh, that type of interaction. And, and it's, uh, see, I view the people who are on my Facebook and, uh, and whatever, we're just one big extended family. Yeah, they're my friends, Facebook buds. Yeah. And it's funny, I, I'll, I'll go the, on a little after midnight sometimes to, to wish happy birthday to the, the readers that come up that day. And, and sometimes, you know, I'll try to get, get in ahead of John because I know he always wishes all of his readers happy birthday on Facebook every day. <laughs> and I, well, <laughs> thanks for the info. I'm, I'm going to be on now 10 seconds after. <laughs> I, I'm not being literal, but it's like, Right. No, it, it's... Uh, you know, it's great being able to interact uh, on that level with the readers. It, it's just, it's enjoyable. You, you get, you know, you, you talk about getting your feedback. That's where you get your feedback, and it's not just all sunshine. Um, you know, they have valid questions. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't? Why didn't that happen? You know, um, it, it's just, uh, I don't know. I like it. It's fun. Do you think uh, that's genre Pacific, though? I mean. Uh would that work for somebody that's uh, doing westerns or anything? You think it goes across all genres or not? I think if you make it that way, it can be across any genre you want. You know, you just have to hit the reader group uh, that that comes on that's interested in what you're talking about, about you know what your books are about. Um, I think you can do that in westerns, romance, you know, whatever have you. I don't think it's genre specific, but that's me. I read that Martin's got a whole whole crew of people that uh, that keep him honest with the, all his characters and and his plot lines, and uh, he has historians, I guess, a couple of historians that, that do stuff for him. I don't know if he pays them or not. I doubt it. And also, Lee Child's got his own army of uh, Reacher fans, and uh, I think uh, if you yeah. just keep contact with your readers, it, it's the biggest positive, in my opinion. A lot of uh, uh, Brandon Sanderson has a whole team of continuity people and uh, beta readers that do all that stuff as well. A lot of the a lot of them do. Yeah, Brian Sanderson's uh, yeah, he's something else. He's a he's a great writer. I I appreciate that he finished uh, Robert Jordan's series out. Do we have some uh, Carl? Do you see any questions in the comments? Or I missed the feed for a little bit. I'm just I'm just doing it now. I'm just having a look. I've got them. Okay, go ahead, John. Um. 
they want to know um, what's the best way to start up a group like you guys have going. Um, if you, I know that Tracy did the initial work, but um, what type of advice would you give these people who are looking to start up their own groups? Find like-minded people. Um, you know, obviously within the same genre, but you have to get along and you have to uh, have respect for each other. Um, you know, and it's not it's not a policing gig, uh, so you really kind of have to want to cross promote uh, your friends. I mean, we're we're friends. That's just basically the way it comes down to it. Uh, you know, why wouldn't I want to put Sean's new work out there? Yeah, when I was first started putting the series out there, I contacted both of these fellows a couple times with um, Tupo and, and John with questions about relating to, to publishing, self-publishing, not to be plugged or not to ask them to you know promote me or anything like that. Just just you know innocent questions, and uh, that's that's how our relationship started. I think you know through another author as well, and um, you know I, I think mutual respect was gained over the last couple of years, and it's going to be fun. We're going to all go to the we have a, a table at the World Horror Convention, which is here in Portland, Oregon this year, and so we're all going to get to meet each other uh, for the first time. And Armand, Rose, Amelia, and uh, who else is going to be there? I think James Cook maybe or. Nah, James pulled out because I told him he was buying the rounds. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, but, was bar tab? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he got scared. Uh, but Armand and Mark and yourself and I think, I'm not sure if Heath's uh, stall cup was going. Um, he was thinking about it. We're going to see Joe McKinney there for sure. I already talked to him. That's going to be kind of cool. Oh, yeah, Joe's going to be there. That's right. Maybe Maberry, hopefully. That'd be kind of nice. Now, now, I do have a question. Uh, you, you guys said you don't read each other's work. Uh, how, how do you determine who makes a good fit for the, the group that you're in if you're not reading one another's work? Um, personality, you know. It, uh, you know, respect. It's. Uh, but I mean, like how, my... how, do you, how do you get to know that? Uh, just I mean, by finding the other writers, and how, how do you get to know them in order to determine? We've well, never again, had a round table. I, that we just kind of threw it well we're thrown together at once I think pretty much yeah. I have a group of people that, that goes and beats the sense into them <laughs> um, nah it, it it just came about I don't I don't really know that there was any concerted effort toward it um, it just kind of happened uh, Mark, Mark and I kind of started chatting about it like I like I mentioned a few years back and uh, it's like, hey, what about uh, you know getting some of these others in and really expanding, uh, expanding ourselves? Um, I don't know. I I, I don't think I, I think it just evolved. I don't I don't think there was any planned aspect to it. Okay. A little bit of serendipity involved, huh? <laughs> just happened. Yeah. And how, how do you determine if you'll uh, bring other people into the group? Like if, if people reach out to you or people you find, if you intend to grow the group, or do you want to just keep the ranks closed at the moment? Well, it just depends on how many zeros are on that check. Um, <laughs> <laughs> See if Tracy likes that gets the good yeah. vibe from him, right? No, I you know it it'll be up to everybody else. I guess if somebody uh, reached out or we you know decided to uh, grow. Um, you know, and, and reach out to others. Uh, there, there honestly hasn't been um, a lot of talk along those lines. Um, I don't think that that's actually even been discussed. I, I think it, it's comfortable. We don't want to get, you know, too large where we lose, you know, what we're really about. Um, I don't know. It, it just really hasn't been discussed. Have you given any thought on how to handle it if you guys ever... Um, add a group member and he just doesn't gel with the group or say you know say Sean goes nuts on you and starts, <laughs> starts everybody out all the time. And... yeah <laughs> um, how would you handle something like that I don't see that happening um, so you know that's kind of the fun thing about it is you really don't think about that because you know that that's kind of outside of uh, the realm of possibility uh, with the group that we have, it uh, it's it's just not an issue. So there's nothing really to discuss or plan for. Or how would we handle that? You know, if if something like that ever did occur, it would probably be pretty obvious. 
Um, it, it's just a, a good group of uh, uh, guys together. And yeah, from my first contact with with Tufo and, and O'Brien, I I haven't had any weird vibes or any any negative uh, any any negative uh, feedback from them, even when I was just a a newbie asking them stupid questions about self-publishing, no. um, which there are a lot of for, for early on for me. But um, yeah, I respect these guys immensely, and uh, you know, I, that's one one reason why I wouldn't go do something stupid to to get myself out ousted from this group. No, uh, no, I <laughs> considering the group here to have to be pretty pretty stupid. Uh, maybe if you caught us all on fire, that probably wouldn't be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Flaming Dr. Peppers. <laughs> Hey, yeah, I had that experience. Anyway, uh, that's actually in one of the books. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I've caught a caught a bar on fire, but uh, I digress. Uh, all right, we're we're up on the seven o'clock. Uh, well, seven o'clock my time. All right, I'm up on the hour. Do we have any more questions in the comments? My feed's been a little slow. John, did you see anything? I I didn't see any. Yeah, no, I haven't seen any. Okay. All right. Um, any uh, what 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 do you guys think the the future holds for you guys? What what's what's your plan? Just is it just keep writing books, or is there other things that you guys are planning on doing? What what's the future for you two? Well, I, I've got uh, I'm signing a contract for for German language, uh, going to be published, audio, um, also print, and uh, what else? <laughs> what else is there? Ebooks. I've negotiated a contract for four years with. Lucifer with a Z in Germany, so that's where I'm going with uh, foreign language rights. Excellent. Excellent. Entire series. Well, maybe we'll have to have you back on after that goes through and see how things go. We'll see. I don't know how long the translation takes, but... <laughs> Three and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. John, how about you? Oh, I'll just uh, keep writing. There's, uh, I can't talk about some of the things that are in the works. You know, it's that whole jinx thing. Um... But there are some some aspects that are in the works uh, that, if they come into play, I'll definitely broadcast. But for now, it's uh, it's writing. I enjoy it. I uh, I enjoy the uh, group that are uh, that is in the book. Uh, they're calling, and uh, it's time to get on with their story. Excellent. You know, I will echo that too. I, I live vicariously through my my characters. Um, you know, I, unlike John, I I never served in the military. I didn't get to fly. And uh, in my in my books and my imagination, I get to enjoy all that stuff. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> I still have a good time doing it. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming on. We really really appreciate it. It was interesting to kind of different perspective than what we you know like what Dave was talking about with email lists and stuff. And we've had a lot of the same people saying the same type of things. And um, as as John Ward pointed out, you know that consistency says a lot. So um, that's that's really cool. So. Uh, thank you so much for being on. We really appreciate it. Well, I really appreciate you having uh, having me. It's uh, it's an honor to be here. And uh, anytime um, you have space, let me know. Good to meet you both. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, fellas. Thanks for being on. Take care. All right, Mr. Ward, you got it. So, how do your mums for me, everyone? Thanks. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Oh, I should say before you close it off, yes. um, I'm, I'm meeting up with. Uh, Two of our regular viewers, uh, Erica, um, who's over in Perth with her husband from New Zealand, and Demelza, who actually lives in Perth. So we're going to have coffee in about 30 minutes. Oh, nice. So, uh, any we never saw other self-publishing roundtable viewers want to come to Perth and buy me coffee? <laughs> uh, give us a like Maybe on Facebook. Uh, like on or YouTube, buy uh, a car. iTunes, all that. Quit talking, Carl. Tell them to, tell them, uh, to give us a good review. Okay. Go and like review on iTunes and like this video on YouTube. That'd be helpful. <laughs> All right. Thanks again for watching. Appreciate it.